I first got started in the computer training industry back in 1998. So I took a sales job with Computer Learning Center and I was selling a network engineering program. I really enjoyed you know, the program itself selling it and I realized what a great career opportunity it would be to actually you know, get into that. So I took that program, I went through it, it's a seven month program uh, on Novell Network Engineering and became really passionate about computer certification, uh, tech, um, and from there I got a network administrator job and also a few um, side gigs doing teaching positions. Well, I first started TrainSignal in 2002, and the reason I started TrainSignal was in the different teaching classes that I had, um, I found that a lot of the students were finishing the program and just weren't, they weren't being placed. They weren't doing as well as I would have hoped, and a lot of it had to do with the curriculums and the schools where I was at. So after getting a lot of experience working within these different schools, I ended up de developing my own curriculum, bringing my own computer equipment in, and kind of found a system in a way that was really successful with the students there. So and that's kind of how I got my first start with Train Signal was to take all this information that I had gathered working at the different schools, put this together, and created my own labs first. And I brought those into the classroom and found a lot of su success with those. And then from there, decided to just start Train Signal. Just went for it. The first Train Signal headquarters actually was not very impressive at all. So I was in a temporary office space, it was like a 10 by 10 space, crammed full of computers. Probably had five computers in there. Um, and there was a uh, therapist down the hall from me. So it was actually a shared office space, so lots of noise. Uh, it was only there for about three months and then moved to another space that was still pretty small. And that's where the first employees really started being hired into Train Signal. And that office space is memorable to me because there was cords, literally networking cables hanging from the ceiling, uh, duct tape, you know, all over the place. So it was really kind of a mess. And looking back on it now, uh, Sandy, one of the first employees, jokes about it because her kids even question, you know, why she was working at this place. So when I first started at Train Signal, it was not the fun office that we have right now in terms of decor. Ceiling tiles were missing. Seat, uh, so floor tiles were missing, the cable modem was just sitting out in the corner, wires were hanging out of the ceiling. Uh, Scott very generously gave me his desk. Uh, unfortunately, that was the best desk in the office. He moved to a plastic table folding table and um, I was given his desk but the dr drawers were not connected to the top so if you bumped it you could have the whole table go flying and um, I had previously worked for some major corporations um, you know 10,000 employees, 30,000 employees, and I had three kids in high school who looked at this new office of mine and were a little surprised at why would you go work for this company um, with this kind of decor. But, you know, from day one when I met Scott and I talked to him and heard his vision, I knew that this company was really going to go places and we really have, and it's been great. Starting Train Signal in 2002 is definitely a struggle. So early on in the process, um, I ran into problems because I didn't really know what I was doing as a business owner. Uh, everything I did took three times as long and cost at least twice as much. So, and I was self-funded, so I was using credit cards to fund this entire thing. So I ended up you know, being about $100,000 plus in credit card debt and then had high interest rates on the credit cards on top of this. So every month as I was trying to pay off credit card debt, the balances were actually growing. So I ended up actually having to take a position, again, teaching. Um, which was difficult because I was basically getting up at five in the morning, commuting downtown into the city of Chicago, uh, working till around three or four, commuting home, and then working on train signal, sometimes till nine or ten at night. Um, and the real difficult part too was that I had a family of two at the time and my wife was pregnant with our third kid. So it was definitely a struggle for a couple years, 2002 and 2003, you know, between, you know, my own personal struggle having to deal with all the, the teaching and trying to get, you know, business ratcheted up. My wife also struggled as well, so. In 2004, uh, I actually quit the teaching job finally towards the end of that year because Train Signal started gaining some traction. Um, just through some partnerships and different things we were doing, sales picked up, and that was one of the biggest reliefs of my life, I think. It was very nice to be able to just focus on Train Signal exclusively. And in 2004, leading into 2005, actually, actually hired our first full-time employee, Gary Eimerman, so who's still with us today. Uh, Gary's been with us for about seven years. So I started with, uh, with Train Signal back in 2005. Uh, it was interesting. I had met Scott a month or so earlier and I was doing consulting and then uh, we decided to uh, join forces and I would come on uh, to Train Signal. Well, I had about three weeks uh, before I started 
And so I didn't have a whole lot of communication with him during that time period. And the first day that I was scheduled to start, I show up, go into the office, all the doors are locked, all the lights are off, and I'm like, hmm, what's going on here? So I go ahead and call Scott's cell phone and get voice message. At this point in time, I'm starting to wonder, I was like, okay, was this like a really bad joke or did the company go out of business or what's going on here? And so I sat around for about five minutes and luckily Scott gave me a call, uh, returned my message. He's like, so sorry, running late. The other person with the key is gonna be there in a few minutes. And so luckily at that point in time, we got in and got started, but it was an interesting start to my first day at work at Train Signal. Um, and that was a great time for Train Signal heading into 2005 as well, because things just seemed right at that point. You know, we, we actually added a couple employees, so by the end of that year, we had three full-time employees and had crossed a million dollars in sales. In 2002, you know, I had no idea that Train Signal would be where we were at right now. So at that point, you know, my goal was really just on starting a business, supporting my family, and 10 years, you know, 10 years later, it's pretty amazing to me to look back and think about everything that's happened. You know, our, our revenue growth, our people count, you know, we're at 40 plus people now, amazing people that I love having on the team. Uh, we've made the Inc. 5000 the last five years running now and have received all sorts of different awards for our product. So to me, I'm really thrilled about where we're at right now. Ten years from now, you know, where do I see Train Signal? I think it is a difficult question to answer in a couple senses. So even when we're looking at strategic planning and the direction overall of the company, we don't typically look further than two to three years ahead of time when we're doing a lot of our planning because things change so much in tech. But the one thing that I know that we will always be focused on is product and people. And product, you know, from the very beginning we created a quality product and it was something, you know, that I really uh, founded the company based upon. So everything that we do going forward, you know, with the video that we're doing currently, with all the innovative products that are coming out, will be focused around quality. And that's something that I can commit to for sure, you know, 10 years from now. And on the people side, this is something I think I've learned a lot with over the, you know, over the last 10 years. Um, people are so integral and important to this business, and that's something that we're going to continue to build around. You know, we have great people at Train Signal, smart, passionate people who really make the difference. And to keep these people on board at Train Signal and to find more people like them is really where my focus is going to be over the next 10 years. The advice I'd give to anybody starting their own company I, I think is different than what you typically get. I think a lot of times it's really easy to pour out general advice. You know, you need to you know, put together a business plan and have you know, long-term planning for the next five years. And I find that you know, there's so much advice that you could give out that by itself doesn't really make a lot of sense because there's, there's a ton that goes into starting a business. But the most important thing that I found out, you know, I just talked about a little bit ago, is quality people. And taking care of those people, and not just the people who work for you, but also the customers. And I think that's something that has benefited this company so much over the last 10 years. And it started off, you know, just as anybody would, you mean, you're just taking care of people. You want to create a quality product and make sure that people are happy. And I can tell you early on that that's one of the reasons why Train Signal kind of got through those hard times is because we took care of people by creating quality products. And a lot of those early customers continue to buy from us today. So we literally have some customers who bought from us you know, seven or eight years ago who are still buying products from us today. And I think a lot of it goes back to that attention to detail within the product. And on the people side, this is something I think we've learned more recently. And we've always taken care of people and we try to do the best thing for people. But now part of our you know, strategy on an ongoing basis is to make sure that people are really taken care of. So we're always looking for new innovative ways of creating you know, new benefits and developing the culture at Train Signal. And that's probably the biggest thing I would give, biggest advice I'd give to anybody starting a business is to really think about the types of people you want to hire and how to retain, hire and retain those A-level employees because they're going to make the biggest difference to your business far and above you know, just the typical person coming into your company.